And so uh, here, as we have read our story, we see that uh, there are midwives who have this assignment. Now, their normal assignment is to help women give birth. Their normal assignment is to pull life from the throes of death. But on this particular day and during this particular season, Pharaoh comes to them and says, we need to do something about these Israelites. They're multiplying too much. We want to bring a stop to it. And so he decided to mess with the healthcare system. He decided to say that whenever there is a boy baby, then just kill him. I cannot imagine what it was like to live in such an environment. And now these women had a, a choice that they had to make. They had to decide if they were going to listen to Pharaoh or do something else. And now you needed to know that if Pharaoh was big and bad enough to kill babies, I'm sure he had no problem dealing with some disobedient midwives. And so now they are grappling with this choice. Are we going to kill kids or are we going to kill our career? But the Bible tells us that these women feared God. It says that they feared the God of the Israelites. And so they decided that they were not going to uh, kill these kids. And so uh, they decided they were going to do something else. Now, they were in a hard position. They were uh, in a place uh, between a rock and a hard place, but they decided that they were going to do the right thing. And so uh, verse 17 tells us, but the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. And so as they made this determination, when we read in verse 20, it says, therefore, God dwelt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very mightily. Now, that to me is a great verse. Uh, I love when God comes through, especially when the enemy was on the scene, because uh, the Bible says that they were uh, the enemy was trying to kill their kids. The enemy was trying to decrease them, but God moved in such a way that the people multiplied and grew very mightily. Uh, and that's what excites me because uh, you are never in a position where God can't bless you. Do you all understand that these people were in slavery, that the, the king of the land had it out for them? He was trying to oppress them. He was trying to kill them. He was trying to decrease them. And in the midst of all of that mess, the Bible says that God blessed them, multiplied them, and they grew very mighty. And so even in the midst of this, God still blessed them. And we serve the kind of God who can uh, bless you in any circumstance and God can use anything to bless you. God can use anything to bless you. They were in slavery and God used that thing to help them grow mightily. They were in the midst of a whole murder mission and God still used it to allow them to grow mightily. God can use anything to bless you. And there are uh, some of us who are going through some things and you don't feel very blessed. And you are wondering, God, how can you bring a blessing out of this? You've cried the tears. You know what it's like to be between a rock and a hard place. You have the words of this text written all over your life. You know what it is like. But even in hard situations, even in dark times, God finds ways to bless people. I'm sure you all remember the pandemic, right? Uh, and this was a time where many people lost their jobs and many people were going through great financial hardships. Uh, but people started saying, Pastor, I, I know, I, 
And they didn't even want to say it out loud, but they were like, I know things are supposed to be hard, but I made more money during the pandemic than I did the year before. In the midst of the pandemic, there were many people who were prospering. God was using even something bad to bring good to his people. God can use anything to bless you. Come here, David. Come in and share with us how God can bless you even on your sick bed. Uh, Psalm chapter 41, verses 2 and 3, it says, The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. This is somebody who is, even in the midst of sickness, they are still finding that God is moving, that God is still blessing. Uh, has there any, anybody ever been in a time where you were sick and God still found a way to bless you? I remember I had a big problem with God. I was upset because I had seen God heal so many people. I would pray and God would heal. And I was just excited that that is what was going to happen. But when I got sick, I prayed and he didn't heal. And I was upset. And I would, I would uh, pray those mean psalms. I would, I would find the smart alecky psalms. And there was one that said, God, pluck, pluck thy hand out of thy bosom and do something. I'm like, God, get your hands out your pockets and heal me. And he took a very long time to do it. But I recognize, realize, and reinterpret that time as a time when I was on my back laying there for two weeks. I could, all I was doing was racking up medical bills and not being able to work and being more worried about that. But while I laid there, I could do nothing else but pray. I could do nothing else but cry out to God. And God began to answer. And God blessed me even in that sickness. God blessed me in the midst of the mess. God can use anything to bless you. And so here we have these uh, midwives, Shipra and Pua. They were in a hard place. They were in a hard place and they didn't know what was going to happen to them now that they had uh, uh, disregarded the king's uh, edict. They didn't know what was going to happen to them now that they were doing the very opposite of what he had asked them to do. And they didn't know if they were going to live to tell about it. They didn't know what was going to happen. And here they were helping the Hebrew women begin families before they even started having families of their own. And now that they have made this decision, they didn't know if they were ever going to be able to. They didn't know if Pharaoh was going to cut them off or cut them out. That's why verse 21 is so important. It says, and so it was, because the midwives feared God, that he provided households for them. Now, that was a good place to say amen. That was a good place to shout because they didn't have any families. And, and I don't know if you've ever had to help somebody get something that you yourself didn't have. I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of position. It's hard sometimes. And they didn't have families, but they were helping and risking their lives to give these other women families. And God turned around and blessed them with their own family. And this is when I recognize that what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. I'm going to say that again. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Now, this is good news because uh, there are many of us who are uh, building people up and we're feeling torn down ourselves. We're helping other families and wondering about our own homes. We are 
praying for others and, and hoping that somebody is praying for us. We're teaching other people's children and wondering what is going to happen to our own. We're doing for others, wondering if God is going to do for us. And our scripture today lets us know that what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. There was a woman in 1 Kings. She was a widow, and she lived during a time where there was a famine. Nobody had anything to eat. And God told Elisha to go to her house, to leave his country, to immigrate to this different place. They were not even of the same nationality. And he goes there, and he is expecting her to care for him. God said that's what she was going to do. And she was like, as the Lord your God lives, let me tell you how this is going to go. I only have a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. I'm going to make that for me and my son over there, and then we're going to lay down and die. I mean, we only have enough to keep us alive for just a little bit longer. I'm sorry, sir. We can't help you. And Elisha said, listen, do exactly like you were planning to do, but, but make a little cake for me and bring me a little water first. And I guarantee that, that, that things will work out. It won't, uh, that oil won't dry up and that bin of flour will not, uh, it will not come to an end. And so again, she's behind this rock in this hard place. She is trying to figure out, does she uh, uh, feed the clergy or feed her kid? She's trying to figure out what she is going to do. And she decides to do just as Elisha told her. And she makes him this cake first. She gave it to him. And I'm so glad that what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. If you read the story, the Bible says, now, mind you, she didn't even have enough food for the day. But once she made that food for Elisha, the Bible says that she, he, and her whole household ate for many days, and the bin of oil did not uh, give up. It did not come to an end. And so uh, 1 Kings 17 verse 5, so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. This is the kind of God that we serve. What you uh, do for others, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Jesus put it like this, give and it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and running over, shall men pour into your bosom. The Bible says, uh, Jesus said, he said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. It says, if you want a friend, then you've got to show yourself friendly. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. David was a man who really wanted the kindness of God. He wanted God's favor all over his life. He wanted to see some wonderful things happen. Uh, we read his prayer in Psalm 119, verse 76. It says, let I pray your merciful kindness be for my comfort. He's like, God, I want your mercy. I want your kindness to, to be in my life. And David understood the assignment. He understood that what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And so David would sit around trying to figure out who he could be kind to. Because remember, he wants God's kindness in his life. And so when we look at uh, 2 Samuel 9, verse 1, it says, Now David said, Is there anyone left in the house of Saul? Saul was the man who hunted him and wanted him dead. Is there anybody left in the house of my enemy that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? So David is just there. He wants God's kindness. And he says, Now, I know that 
what I make happen for others, God is going to make happen for me. Is there anybody I can show kindness to? If you go to the next chapter, he's up to his same tricks. In chapter 10, it says, Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanan, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness to me. So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. And David's servants came into the land of the people of Ammon. The people of Ammon were enemies to Israel too. So David wasn't out here just showing kindness to the people he liked. Hello, somebody. David was not just showing kindness to people he thought could bless him back. But he was showing kindness to a, a people in general, even before he became king. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, uh, verse 15, it says, but the men were very good to us. They're talking about David and his men. He says, we were not hurt. We did not, we did not miss anything as long as we were accompanied by them. When they were in the fields, they were a wall to us by night and by day. All the time we were with them keeping the sheep. David understood there was something to being kind because he wanted God to, to do that for him. And there are many of us who are looking for God to do things for us. We're looking for other people to do things for us. And we have it in our minds. You know, once, uh, uh, you know, the old people used to say, you know, when my ship comes in, once my ship comes in, once I, I get a lot of money, once I get older, once, once you know, I, I have more stuff, then I'll be kind, then I'll share, then I'll do this. But I stopped by to let you know today. That what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And even when you feel like you don't have enough, when you feel like things are hard, when you don't know how it's going to go down, please understand that you are never in a place where God can't bless you. Even when David was in these caves and when he was homeless, so much so that he had to sleep outside, they were still kind. They were still blessing people because David understood you are never in a place where God can't bless you. And so that means that we don't have to be stingy, we don't have to be mean, we don't have to be fearful, we don't have to be afraid, we don't have to be jealous, we don't have to be petty, we don't have to hold on to things because we now understand that what we make happen for others, God will make happen for us. And sometimes we feel some kind of way when we see people living our dream. There's a jealousy that wants to rise up. We, we're trying to figure out, how can I get this for myself? Listen, help them get their dream. Help them live your dream. Because what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. I remember when I was at another church and we were trying to uh, do a girls conference and we did not have the money to do it. And we were trying to figure out what we were going to do. And of course, when you don't have enough, you want to hold on to it. Uh, but, but we learned that if it doesn't meet your need, then you might as well make it a seed. And this was one of the things we began to do. It became a part of our culture. So we said, let's find somebody who is doing what we want to do and give them the little money we have because they're already doing it. And so we found uh, uh, an organization that was already blessing young girls and we still needed the money for our girls conference, but we understood that what we make happen for others, God will make happen for us. And so we took it, it didn't meet our needs, so we made it a seed and they were blessed and you all already know, I wouldn't be telling the story if God didn't turn around and bless us abundantly so that we had more than enough. We ended up having over a year's worth of money to continue doing the thing for the next year. We just wanted to do an event, but God provided enough for us to minister to young ladies for the next year. 
I remember even when we were doing renovations and we were like, what are we going to do? They're like, pastor, this is broken and this is broken and, and, and we just don't have the money. I was like, you all know the drill. What we make happen for others, God will make happen for us. So let's go find somebody who's building or restoring or repairing something and give them the little money we do have. Now, at first, they were like, pastor, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> but they saw God do it over and over again. There were times where I'd be like, I don't know what we're going to do. They're like, what do you mean? We're going to give some money away. Let's find, let's find somebody to bless because what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Now, I'm going to quiz you. What you make happen for others who will make it happen? Amen and amen. Can I just stop right here a little bit and remind you that God is the one who's going to do it? Amen. Because there's many times where we get upset and we get offended because we help them and we're expecting that they are going to help us. I kept her kids for all of this time and now all I need is just a little gas money and, and she is acting like this? <laughs> we do for other people and we are expecting that if we made it happen for them they will make it happen for us but that is not the moral of today's story the bible implies that god will make it happen for you and so you don't have to be upset because other people are not doing like you did them. You blessed them and you were hoping that they would bless you. Do not get upset. They don't owe you anything. As a matter of fact, when Jesus walked the earth, he said, look for people who can't pay you back. He said, find people, invite them to the party, the ones that nobody wants to invite. Invite the ones that won't bring you to their houses, do for people who can't pay you back, who can't do anything for you. And the Bible says, God says, I will pay you back. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, it says, he who has pity on the poor and lends, who has pity on the poor lends to who? The Lord. And what? He will pay back what he has given. Did you all hear what I said? Now see, like if I had to choose between uh, somebody paying me back, like, like if you had to choose somebody paying you back, would you, would you want the person who sleeps at the gate or Bill Gates to owe you one, right? The, the person who sleeps at the gate or Bill Gates, but listen, uh, God says, I'm going to do you one better. I own the pearly gates. My streets are made with gold, and I am the one who will pay you back. Luke 14, verse 14, it says, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. I hope somebody just got delivered. I hope, I mean, you came and you were upset and you were like, uh, they, they said they were going to pay me back last week. They told me they didn't have the money and I'm looking at them on Facebook with a new outfit on. And you feel in some kind of way, you're like, I know they have my money. <laughs> but the Bible says that you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. God is saying, I have something for you. And even if they don't pay you back, I will pay you back. And you're going to have an extra special blessing if you're giving to those who cannot pay you back. Y'all didn't like that? <laughs> you're like, we want our money back. <laughs> Remember the person at the gate, Bill Gates, the, the one who owns the pearly gates? You will be all right because what you make happen for others. Amen and amen. Proverbs 11 verse 25, we read it earlier today. It says, the generous soul will be made rich 
and he who waters will also be watered himself. The New Living Version says the man who gives much will have much, and he who helps others will be helped himself. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And no greater place do we see this than in the life of Jesus the Christ. He came to grant us life. And not just life, but life more abundantly. I mean, he came to heal us. He fed us. He did so many wonderful things. And even when he was crucified, even when he was betrayed, when he was lied on, even when he was killed, death could not hold him. Not when he came to bring life and life more abundantly, even in the grave. I told you there is no place where God can't bless you. And so Jesus lived even in the grave. And when he was in the grave, because he came to earth, to grant us life. He died, but he didn't stay dead. And he wasn't just resurrected. The Bible said, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He was elevated to something else. And so Jesus made it happen for you and God made it happen for him. And so even though he died on Friday and, and rested on Saturday, early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand. He said, I am he who was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I've got the keys of hell, death, and the grave. He's the same one that said, I'm giving you the key. He gave keys to his disciples and then he rises with some new keys to death, hell, and the grave. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And because of Jesus Christ, we have a, a, a life eternal and life immortal and life immeasurable. We have a life everlasting and life forevermore. And I don't know about you, but I am excited at the prospect of life with Christ, an enduring life, an everlasting life, an abiding life, an ageless life, an infinite life, a better life, a best life, a blessed life, a life that is precious, a life that is a, a eternal and a changed life. And as we work day to day, to bring people hope as we work day to day to help uh, 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 the Lord bring change and hope and joy in the lives of others. And, and sometimes we wonder if God is noticing, sometimes we're wondering if we're ever going to have time to do for ourselves like we do for others. Listen, you don't have to. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And so today I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that God is thinking of you. God is rewarding you and God is the one who will repay you. And so you don't have to worry about missing out. This is a law of the kingdom, and I know it may feel counterintuitive, but the kingdom is different from the laws of this world. And if we follow kingdom principles, then we will have the things that the kingdom affords. And the law of the kingdom is what we make happen for others. God himself will make happen for us. And so I don't know about you, but is there anybody in here like you were worried about what you had done for others and you felt some kind of way, but you now recognize not only what you've done is okay, 
but you are freed up to continue to be a blessing to others because you now know that God has said in his word over and over again. He's demonstrated over and over again that what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And so if today you're saying, you know what, I, I believe it. And I'm going to live it. I am now okay with helping others. I am okay with pouring into them. I'm even okay with helping people do the things that I myself want to do and maybe haven't even done yet. But I recognize that I don't have to worry about it because God is going to do for me as I do for others. If you've come to that revelation and that commitment of going forward and being a blessing, being contagiously blessed and blessing those is with whom you come in contact with. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet. And I'm going to pray that God gives us the strength to live that thing out. It's not always easy. You'll spend some time between rocks and hard places. But God is going to be with you. And you will never be in a place where God can't bless you. Our gracious Heavenly Father, God, as we stand here today, we recognize that you are always at work. Father, there have been some things that you've asked us to do that we've kind of done begrudgingly, that we, we kind of didn't want to do. We felt like we should spend some of our time and resources doing the things to make sure that we get ahead. But today, you are reminding us that you want us to help others. And what we make happen for others, you will make happen for us. As the women in our story helped grant families to others, even before they had their own, you allowed them to have families. Lord, there are some of us who, who uh, want degrees and want to finish our education and and we find ourselves uh, tutoring and helping others. God, uh, there are some of us that should have been promoted a long time ago, but instead of being promoted, they keep asking us to train those who will be promoted. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us, oh God. What we make happen for others, would you do the promotion, oh God? Would you uh, make it happen for us? And Father, some of the things we won't see on this side of glory, some of us will receive our reward at the resurrection of the just. Would you give us the grace? Would you give us the faith? Would you give us the peace to persevere until then? And when it is all said and done, we will give you praise, honor, and glory. For we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated.